Hi, my name is Zachary Ernst. I'm a second year medical student at Oklahoma State University Center for Health Sciences. I'm the corresponding author for this project, uh, Factors Associated with Health Inequities and Access to Kidney Transplantation in the USA, a scoping review. My co-authors are Andrew Wilson, Andriana Pena, Mitchell Love, Ty Moore, and Dr. Matt Vassar. Okay, so a little bit of background about this. This is all about the kidney and trying to get access to uh, kidney transplantation, uh, mostly for those with chronic kidney disease. Uh, the kidney is the most needed organ for transplantation in the United States. However, demand and scarcity of this organ has caused significant inequities for historically marginalized groups. In this review, we, we report on the frequency of inequities in all steps of kidney transplantation from 2016 to 2022. Um, and this is sort of a uh, piggyback, or we're, we're just adding on to a publication that was that was done back in 2021 by Harding et al. However, they just looked at the early steps of kidney transplantation, and for them, that included uh, referral and evaluation. Um, so search criteria, we based that on the National Institute of Health's 2022 list of health inequity populations. Um, and the goal of this is to outline steps for future research aimed at assessing interventions and programs to improve health outcomes. The scoping review was developed following guidelines from the Joanna Briggs Institute and Prisma Extension for Scoping Reviews. Um, we started this back in July of 2022, where we searched Medline via PubMed and Ovid in uh, databases to identify articles addressing inequities in access to kidney transplantation in the U.S. And um, articles had to address at least one of the NIH's 2022 health inequity groups. So those can be seen down here below. Uh, those include race and ethnicity, sex or gender, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer plus, underserved rural communities, education level, income, and occupation status. And based off of that Joanna Briggs uh, Institute and Prisma Extension, here's our Prisma flow diagram. This is just showing the process of including ex and excluding studies. So here's our rationales for exclusions. Um, and we ended up with 42 articles that we extracted data from. Okay, so table one, this is showing our frequencies and percentages of the factors associated with inequities among included studies. So here's N of 42, our total uh, sample size. Um, and this shows our uh, factors that we uh, analyzed. And um, these percentages are just showing um, the uh, number of studies that looked at race or ethnicity, for example. So in, in this case, we had 38 studies, 30 of the 42 studies that looked at race or ethnicity. The least of those uh, was LGBTQ. Only two articles actually assessed uh, access to transplantation for, for this community. Um, and below, we've got study design. Um, this just shows the of the 42 included studies, what type of study designs uh, we have in our sample. And below study setting, this shows, you know, was it a single institution, maybe just done at one university, or was it a single state or a multi-state? And over here, figure two, this shows over time um, what has gone on in terms of uh, how these frequencies or these, these inequities have been examined. And so our sample of 42 studies indicate that Black race, female sex or gender, and low uh, SES are negatively associated with referral evaluation and waitlisting for kidney transplantation. Furthermore, only two studies from our sample investigated LGBTQ plus identity since their addition, there being the NIH's addition of SGM in 2016 regarding access to transplantation. Lastly, we found no detectable trend in studies for race, ethnicity, or sex or gender inequities between 2016 and 2022. Okay, and then so for conclusions, investigations and inequities for access to kidney transplantation for the two most studied groups which would be race and ethnicity, and then sex or gender, have shown no change in frequencies. Regarding race and ethnicity, continued interventions focused on educating Black patients and staff of dialysis facilities may increase transplant rates. Studies aimed at assessing effectiveness of the kidney pair donation program are highly warranted due to incompatibility pro pro problems um, in female patients. The sparse representation for the LGBTQ plus population may be due to a lack of standardized data collection for sexual orientation. So we recommend that this community be engaged via surveys and further investigations for more uh, objective data collection. And then below, I've got my email just in case you all have any questions or concerns. Thank you for your time.